What's up everybody, thanks for tuning in to the Mad Yeti Expedition channel. Today we've got a very special video for you. We are in Heber City, Utah at Fieldcraft Survival Headquarters. Standing with me is Mike Glover, CEO of Fieldcraft Survival. Mike has a very decorated resume with experience ranging from special forces in the military to government contracting. Mike, thank you for having us here today. No, thanks for being here, thank you. So uh, what I'd like to do is kind of go take a look at your go rig, your loadout, uh, some of the products that you guys have manufactured and what uh, kind of how, how you apply them to the vehicle and, and uh, sort of how they work. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, so one, we do a lot of overland training, which uh, we think is complementary to delivering all these techniques and education that's preparedness. So we use it as a recreational delivery mechanism to say, hey, this isn't a scary realm. If we just outfit our vehicles, outfit our homes, outfit ourselves, we could be better prepared. So we come from that perspective, because I come from a special operations uh, culture and profession where we paid attention to those kind of details. Like, hey, what kind of tires you're gonna have on your vehicle matters, especially when you're in the middle of Africa uh, doing counterterrorism operations or driving back and forth to the embassy. And so what we have done is educated uh, based on uh, the overland vehicle, building it inside out for recreation and then by benefit benefiting from uh, being set up for preparedness. That's awesome. So a lot of the things that we make from the company's perspective for products, for example, we make with preparedness in mind. Uh, one of the things is, you know, like this, uh, our overland mobility uh, panel pack, it actually stemmed from an idea I had when I had a buddy of mine who was uh, tragically killed in a, a motor vehicle accident. Um, when I, my first Jeep that I bought in 1999, I still own, um, I grew up in, uh, in North Carolina doing a lot of uh, back roads, Appalachian type off-roading. And I had a Molly adapter on the back of my seat. Well, if you have a medical first aid kit on the back of that and it's Molly attached, you can't just grab it and go. So if you had a casualty, if you were the casualty, you had to access the compartment, pull the contents, mm -hmm. but here I can grab this, rip it away, and then get where I need to go with all the um, equipment I need on hand. Right. Uh, ready access is what we talk, what we say. And you know, this panel pack converts into a go bag, same premise. If I am dislocating from this vehicle, going camping with my family or going on a hike, leaving the vehicle in a parking lot, I could still break it down and take all my life-saving equipment with me. Right. So that, that's the premise behind it. Yeah, and you, and you sent me one of the bags and it's great. I've got it loaded in my Tundra right now. So yeah. it's, yeah. it's, it's a game changer for sure. I appreciate that. Yeah, just the simple things that we do. Um, you know, th this vehicle is a uh, 2006 Land Cruiser LC100. It's vehic a vehicle similar to the vehicles I used overseas. Toyota is a very reputable and reliable brand across the world. Um, I built this with, um, minimalism in mind and I know it looks fancy and looks high speed but really to the drivetrain to the actual vehicle besides the bumpers I haven't really done anything to it yeah. so it's the it's the highest horsepower model in the LC100 series they did a bump up in 06 and 07 and it has the an adequate amount of power in a V8 powered uh, Land Cruiser um, has manual suspension with an old EMU system instead of the ride height adjustable ride height suspension and has ARB front and rear. Awesome. Um, I, I can walk you around the back if you want to see yeah. the, the back end. So when we build, build these rigs, one of the big things is um, build it with utility in mind. I, I'm a big fan of recreation. I, I, I love having vehicles that are built out for recreation, but again, by benefit, everything that I carry on the, for the trail, by benefit is set up for a bug out scenario or just setting me up for success. Yeah. So standard setup, you know, this is a goose gear setup. It has the uh, uh, lockable drawer system, which I think is important because I do have uh, guns and stuff. I travel and do recreation, whether that's sports, uh, hunting, whatever it may be. I I'm not just gonna leave my bow sitting in the back of a truck. Right. I'll, I'll put it in the drawer system that fits it um, as well as all my valuables. So I, I think it's really cool to have that. I could bam, put this down, lock it up. Uh, has a couple of storage access places on the uh, in the cabinets and then has the ability to pull all the way out which is pretty cool because I mean this is loaded down with all of our stuff in it um, something else we decided to do with this rig is you know I have a family so I want to make sure my family's prepared so I have a refrigerator 
not for just chow, but I mean everything that we're doing. It's, if we're traveling with, uh, with food and water, um, I, I wanna have it on hand. And if I'm off grid away from people, I wanna make sure that it's uh, readily available. Right. Uh, have a little, this is the camp set up, the camp drawer set up. I have, people are like making fun of me because I got a, you know, a Coleman. $10 Coleman yeah. grill. But I'm, I'm a simple person and this cost $20 from Walmart. Yeah. But if I get this, I could throw it on the hood, I could throw it on the tailgate, I could throw it on the ground. And if something happens catastrophic to it, it's not a big deal, I could replace it. Uh, but there are some better options than this. Uh, I just got this in this, in this particular setup. Um, I, I opted for a National Luna, uh, both battery, uh, dual battery system. So you can see it's blinking red right now because uh, it, it's, it's being trickle charged. You have to run these vehicles uh, routinely in order to keep that thing topped off. Yeah. Um, I just turned it on and I'll start getting the power built off. But the benefit of this is it's not running off of my um, battery that I need to start my car. It's, it's an auxiliary uh, accessory battery, gotcha. which means this goes dead, the, the car doesn't go dead. That's both National Luna, and then, then I got the National Luna fridge, which is a good fridge setup. What's the capacity of the fridge? Uh, this one is their 80, okay. I believe. So it's, it's the biggest one, it's one of their biggest ones. Yeah. Um, but this is the, the legacy model. And I like this one because you can see all the, the, the data on the side, knowing how it's powered, cool it down. It also has a freezer component as well as a fridge component and I, like if i go hunting or i'm i have a lot of wild game in the fridge i can run a freezer side on this side and then i could run all my uh fridge stuff on on one side that's very cool um nothing real particularly special about this except um look i'm not <laughs> i've been through this a lot i've been through the uh the setups of uh going and sleeping on the roof you're a big guy i'm a big guy I am too old, my back's too jacked up from the military to be sleeping on a roof in a rooftop tent. Yeah. So I'm more about um, comfortable camping. So I've been looking at different options, whether it's, uh, uh, I'm looking at Alu Cab right now. Mm -hmm. I'm also looking at ground setups because I need the space. Yeah. So this one isn't with camping on top or camping within in mind. We do have those rigs, but this is uh, set up for the day trip. Uh, and this is also my daily driver. I, I drive this every single day. Yeah, I appreciate it, yeah. man. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. The be one of the best things about this rig or is this setup, I think, um, you know, what you sacrifice at a vehicle that only has a load capacity of about 1,500 pounds is it, you don't have a lot of uh, load. You, yeah. you have to compromise. So I look at ounces and I look at pounds. And when I d went with this setup, I wanted something robust. And some of the setups require you to manually do things. I like this. You could pop a latch and it's, it's, it's set up. Uh, to where you could just swing it open. Um, I haven't had zero issues with um, uh, any ARB components front and rear. And there's a lot of big game around here. And so I don't want to hit a moose. There's moose uh, here um, with the front end without a loop. Right. So I chose to go to a loop to protect the radiator in the front end. I actually uh, smacked a deer um, during deer season last year. And if I didn't have that loop with a steel bumper, it, it's likely it would have been catastrophic. Yeah. So, you know, like you have a, a good setup because you got the low capacity so i'm very careful where front bumper rear bumper that's about it as far as weight because um, yeah. i want to make sure i don't uh compromise the safety right. of the vehicle gotcha very cool yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a beautiful uh, ride and your uh, your dodge is also pretty awesome and yeah and uh good good setup there so so a lot of my uh, my viewers are more in the overland space um so in your words how what is the importance of mobility? And maybe, maybe for people that are just getting into overlanding or also uh, people that are just trying to be more prepared because I'm sure some people are gonna hear your name and they're gonna put, type you into YouTube and this video will pop up. Yeah. So for people that are new to this, uh, how, would you, how would you describe that? Yeah, mobility is actually a term that, that came from my time in special operations where we did long range movements with vehicles. And the only difference is, uh, is in long range movements, we're doing a direct narrow operation that has a specific mission set with specific requirements. But one of those requirements that was a standard operating procedure was how we loaded these vehicles out. Maintenance, recovery, fuel, um, beans and bullets kind of thing. So if you establish an SOP, what we want to educate is there's a standard. The standard is you should have survival, med, fuel, tire considerations, ground clearance, 
uh, and look at weight load capacity considerations. If you, if you understand that where there shouldn't be a lot of compromise in setting up that SOP, then you're always prepared during the worst case scenario. And, and I, I say worst case, but in overlanding, I've been in overlanding trips. My first time I've ever gone overlanding uh, significantly, uh, I did a lot of it with my father growing up, but my own trip, I was 18 years old and I had my Jeep and the girls in front of me, um, they basically hit a boulder, rode it up and were sitting on the back of their brand new Jeep. I think at the time it was like a Rubicon and it was sitting straight up and the girls didn't know what to do. And so at the time I pulled up and I told them calmly exactly what to do. One, we had to get them safely extracted from the vehicle. And then we had to uh, set up winch lines to lower it, to the lower it down to the ground. If we would have just kept them in there, they would have risked smashing on the ground and getting hurt. So when we looked at that, uh, I realized not a lot of people were prepared in advance for those things going wrong. Yeah. So we, we see a lot of things when we're on uh, off-road trails, when we're off-grid and we're doing overlanding. Instead of let it being a lesson learned where somebody catastrophically might be hurt or potentially killed, let's start thinking about those things preemptively and then planning for those things. And like I said, there, I, I think as a standard, and we educate this, there is a set build out that you shouldn't deviate from that's gonna set you up for success. Gotcha, and you guys teach that in your course. I know you've got the Overland uh, experience. experience coming up. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and that's the kind of thing, it's like fully immerse, immersive uh, program. Yeah, um, when we did, I, I've done this for, five years now and we, we did our first overland experience about five years ago in nevada and what i wanted to do was make it fun so we did a two and a half day experience we we made it fun but i'm bringing in this one one it's all inclusive like i'm hiring a a chef to come in to cook chuck wagon style food um i have all my instructors including like my tier one guys coming in to teach their specialty which is survival mobility um of first aid and even tactics because I want everybody to get trained from the best. I am not a subject matter expert at any one given thing. I'm a jack of all trades kind of guy, but there's a lot of things that people could benefit from talking like Kevin Estella, yeah. who is an expert at survival. So this all inclusive experience is overlanding, off-roading, having fun, breaking bread at campfire, building relationships, but also learning along the way. Yeah, it sounds like an awesome experience. It's gonna be fun. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll make sure that uh, in the description uh, below, we're going to put all the social medias, websites, and all the information on this so people can find you, find your podcasts, and, uh, and, and connect with you. I appreciate so, that. Yeah. Okay, but uh, thank you so much for hosting yeah. us and having yeah. us, brother. And, uh, yeah. and uh, I'll see you in a little bit for the, uh, for the afternoon event. Yeah, anytime, man. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. Thanks, bro. Yeah.